What's up guys? The squat is the king of all exercises. But should a man be able to squat 315 pounds? And how low should you go? Let's settle this debate once and for all. Let's do it! Welcome back to the Fit Fat Dad Podcast, where we are helping others grow in their faith, family, and fitness. And today is another topic that we're going to debate. Love it. We've done the bench, we've done the deadlift, and today we're going to talk squat. Squat. Should a man be able to squat 315 pounds? But hey, cue the squat police, because just because you claim it... Doesn't mean it counts. That's right. Oh, that's right. All right, buddy. How low should you go? So, Blair, my lovely gym owner. Yeah, man. As we always do, you want to give us a brief history of the squat for all those that actually, you know, yeah. care about it? Yeah. So, um, believe it or not, the squat um, kind of became popular in the early 1900s in Germany. Mm. In Germany. Okay. Uh, then a guy by the name of Henry Steinborn. Oh, that's nice. That's, you very, got it. that's very German, right? Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> you didn't know that. Did I didn't not yeah. know that. Okay. You've done your research. Yeah, I have. I have. So he um, he brought it over to America after World War One, and really started to... Um, to it gain his popularity, right? And he started kind of revolutionizing and, and changed the way that, uh, as a, in Americans, that we squatted. He, he so, said, hey, I'm done with war. I'm bringing in the gains. I'm bringing it. <laughs> <laughs> I see what you did yeah, there. I see what yeah, you did there. Yeah. Um, but also that, you know, after that, he also brought in a lot of different variations. So, uh, hey, you have high bar. You have low bar. You have front squat. You've got wide squat. You yeah, got well, narrow yeah. squats. You yeah. got squat with bands. Squats with chains. Yeah, squat, squat. You, you, yeah, squats upon squats upon squats. So why is the squat like the king of all exercises? Talk to me about the benefits. Well, I mean, it's kind of like you know, kind of like when we talk about the deadlift. Uh, you're engaging your lower half and you know your your quads and your hamstrings and your glutes. I mean, those are the biggest muscles in your body. And um, if you are trying to gonna get stronger or even if you're on a weight loss journey you need more muscle mass right yeah okay so if you have more muscle on your body then that means that's going to help it's going to help your metabolism yeah, it's help your metabolism Absolutely. and it's going to help you know fat loss right so um why not train the biggest muscles in the body and so many people miss you know <laughs> skip, leg day. skip leg day i mean <laughs> <laughs> Chicken legs. Chicken legs. Yeah. Well, so there's also that, but it's also your foundation, right? So, yeah. you know, we can talk about pretty muscle and upper chest and biceps and everything that looks good, but functionally having a strong lower half and trunk is going to help you have be healthier, right? Um, injury prevention, okay? So, you know, I mean, if you're strong around the hips as you age, are What's the likely you're going to have a hip replacement without you know without a without a catastrophic injury yeah. right? Um, but you're going to be strong and you're going to support your joints yep. right. And what do we have to do around most everybody has to walk and we got to get stand up and sit down. Guess what? When you sit on a toilet, what are you doing? Popping a squat. Popping a squat. When you sit in a chair, you're popping a squat. So you're squatting day in and day out. So it's just a very functional movement. And I, I I'm going to say this: I despise people that don't train their legs. I'm saying it. I'm throwing it into the ether. Have you seen this commercial that has been out there? It's this uh, USC football player. I, I assume he's a football player, and he's looking into the mirror. And this this guy looks back, and he says, look at them chicken legs. <laughs> he's like, what? He's, you know, he's buff up top. He's <laughs> yeah. like, look at them chicken legs. He's this probably 60-year-old guy. <laughs> okay. And he, he like has his breakaway pants, and he goes, I'm so-and-so, 1989 King of Leg Day. Like, I have not seen that one. I'm going to look that one up. You'll see it this, this Saturday. <laughs> okay. All right, so let's move into the pros of squatting yep. 315. So the ability to squat 315, yep. often referred to as the three-plate three squat, plates, which yep. is actually six plates, but it's kind of like the bench press where it's 225, it's yeah. two on each side, it's three on each side. So most would say that that is a very – solid benchmark to measure one's fitness journey um it's not only a, a testament to their physical strength but also their dedication their discipline mm -hmm. uh and their resilience but should men really aim for this weight um you know because it's not very common we get back to the the word let's say you know 
take a shot every time you hear the word gin, gin pop. Right. right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but um, it's not common or, uh, amongst it. I mean, I think it's again. I think it's a it's a benchmark, and I, I you hit the nail on the head when you said the dedication. Because I mean, if you're weight moves weight, we all we we established that in previous videos, yep. right? Go okay. take a look at the work. Yep, yep, exactly. So weight moves weight, but three fifteen is. I mean, if you're putting three plates on the bar in general population. Like you've put in some time and effort to be Ooh, able to do that. Yeah, especially you know? if you have, and we'll get into a more a quality form squat. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> there's a lot out there that's like, yeah, you uh, Yeah, yeah. If you're if you're hinging at the hips and going on going down two inches, <laughs> bro, that's not a squat. <laughs> that's the, you. You have not accomplished anything. No. Yeah. No. Um, so I would say I would say yes, it's a proof of dedication, but should. Should you be able to do that? Um, you know, there's kind of a rule of thumb out there I, that I've always lived by. It's one and a half times your body weight. If you yeah. can, if you can squat one and a half times your body weight, like that's a healthy number to be shooting for um, right out of the gate. Yeah, and and then we always do it uh, with our friends at StrengthLevel.com. Yep. So that's exactly right. An intermediate male lifter should be able to squat one and a half times his body weight. So what that actually puts that out because it takes the average male weight mm -hmm. and then based on that. So it says for an intermediate lifter, 287 pounds is the mark. Yeah. If you're just starting out, 140, which is – I'm going to call it 135 because that's a single plate. Yeah. So – that that's where it puts us. So, do you want to take us through? Talk us through, and, and you addressed it. But if you had to break it down into four main benefits, what would they be of the of the squat? Well, we we, we hit muscle growth, yeah. right? Okay. Yeah, definitely. So, I mean, that's a it's a it's a great strength component, and you know, it's the biggest muscles in your body, in your in your legs. And, and they also say that uh, because squatting heavy. It actually will increase testosterone, yeah. right? Yeah. So the the muscle that you build in your legs, you pack on more muscle mass. Right. Yep. So then your resting metabolism is higher. So yep. you burn fat more at rest. Yep. But then you also increase testosterone through that. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and then um, one we didn't mention was um, bone bone density. Oh, you know what I mean? Yeah. So and we speak to this a lot with our ladies because osteoporosis is as women age and go through menopause and things like that. So if there's any ladies listening. Lift. lift strength strength okay so but you know weight bearing exercises is one of the best preventative measures to osteoporosis and guys you can get osteoporosis it's just more prominent in the yeah. ladies right yeah. um so having stronger bones which as you age guess what that helps you if you fall or things like that not break a bone guess what i've never broken a bone in my body other than other than my finger, you're a curse now, and, buddy. And you know what? I squat a lot. <laughs> there you go, right? There you go. I'll cover you in prayer. Okay, that you walk out of here. <laughs> hey, I've I've lived. I'm thirty. I'm gonna be thirty nine, right? Watch watch this. I'm gonna <laughs> on my thirty ninth birthday. I'm gonna break a bone. Yeah. Um. So yeah, and you know, and we mentioned it. It's functional, right? Yeah. I mean, we squat all the time. I mean, all we, the time. All the time. You, you're doing some 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 form of squat in your daily activity um and it's just going to help and you know it, i think it's one big thing it's great to be able to, to to squat a lot but if you look at the longevity of the movement and how it's going to help you as you age if you start squatting earlier you're going to do a lot of preventative m measures yep. to things that can c come later in life yep so let's move into our next point the yeah. cons of squatting 315. Yeah. So it's estimated that, and, and, and let's begin this in reality because we addressed it, but I don't think we went this deep in our bench press video that like 0.05% of the world can bench 300 pounds. Mm -hmm. and, and, and we said 225 in our bench press video, 315 is like another level. Yeah. But 0.05% of the world's population. So there's no specific data on that for squats. We have the strength level. I think there's 17 million uh, logged, right? But let, let's just go ahead and assume that squatting 315 is probably higher than 0.05%, yeah. but it's probably not this just astronomical number. It's probably it's probably less than 1%, I guarantee no, I would agree e Even that. if it's at, at 1%. Uh, so the ability to do that is no small feat. But... 
we, we get into the cons, obviously the risk of, of injury. And with squat, it, it is well, – take me through a personal coaching. How hard is it to teach a proper squat with somebody that has average to low athletic ability, has never lifted before? How hard is it to teach somebody how to, how would, to do that? I would say it's easier to teach than the, than the deadlift. I mean, so I, my personal opinion, the risk of injury is lower with the squat than it is a deadlift. Weight, um, weighted squat. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Even, even with weighted, right? Okay. Even with weighted. Um, but there's a lot of, uh, we call them points of performance, mm-hmm. POPs. So th- there's a lot of points of performance that you have to be able to hit in a squat to do it correctly. Um you know, you also have to do some evaluation of hip mobility. Um, you, all, I ask always this question: Hey, do you have any previous low back injuries? Because yeah. now you know you're loading up the spine, and yep. if and if there's any kind of pre-existing injury, it's going to let you know. Absolutely. Right? And maybe not early on, but the more you put weight on it, it can aggravate stuff that may that's probably already there. Yep. Um, so you know. <laughs> Is it the most dangerous movement? I was to say dangerous. Is does it cause a lot of injuries? I think where injuries are occurred is when people don't have spotters, right? Good point. Okay, and that's when people get stuck at the bottom. You know, they roll it forward off their neck. They don't, or they've never been taught how to bail roll it, off it off their the, back. Roll it off their back. <laughs> when I see injuries in, squ- in squatting, that's where it is. Or it's when you get into these power lifters that are putting, you know. 800 900 thousand pounds in the back and yeah. you know when you're loading up that much i yeah. mean you're, you're testing the limits of your body no matter how much you train and and you mentioned when they get stuck and a lot of people and i've been notorious for doing this squatting heavy when you hit the bottom of your squat and you try to come out a lot of people it took me forever to realize like engage your glutes yeah and fire your you know quads yeah, yeah. and then push out of it that's and, right and you come straight up but a lot of people want to round right. yep. and then go up and that creates a and, whole lot of strain and that's like a core strength too so yep. i mean they, you know it, just like in deadlifting it's not just a lower half like you have to have core strength to be able to do it to lift heavy and lift heavy properly yeah absolutely and, and one point i want to make is obviously uh if you've been listening to the podcast my back is jacked yep. right my l5 and S, s1 are pushing through each other like I, I'm going to be five inches shorter here soon, uh, but I still squat. I don't back squat, mm-hmm. right? Every now and then I'll throw it in, yeah. but not heavy. Yeah. But I've moved away from heavy, heavy back squats, which I used to do all the time, and I front squat. Yep. And as I'm getting older, I, I'll get hey, I got bursitis in my hips, so my <laughs> hips aggravate. So I use a box squat. Yep. So I do a front box squat, but I'm keeping the squat alive and all those things. Uh, it's different, but it helps. So I love if if you're listening to this and you haven't ever squatted or you, you need some variations, having a target, right, is a great, great start. I love a box squat. I love it. I love a box squat to start. Um, now, there's variations of that. Like yes. Box squatting and, and, and just a raw squat is two different movements and it's training two different yep. exercises. However, if you're new to the gym, just go to a target, right? Go to a target, and I would set that target to start at about parallel. And if you can't get to parallel, that means you, we got to work on mobility, yeah. right? If you're, I mentioned it earlier. If you're just going er, er, like that's not a squat. You're not really doing anything. Yeah. Um. You know. And then there's there's some variations. We're going below depth and things like or below uh, hip crease below the knee um, has its you know has its advantages and things mm-hmm. like that. But if you're starting off, just find the target at parallel, so you know where it is. And go from there. And, and and here's something that other people don't talk about: genetic limitations. Oh yeah, everybody's built different. And and, and 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 we'll have to call in our buddy cauliflower Matt Wheeler. Yep. But the the length of your femur, yep. the length of your torso, yep. all these things affect your squat. Like, Absolutely. are you going to lean forward? Which, and a lot of people will say, is an improper squat. But it's actually, if you look at the hip lever, yep, it's actually a really great squat. And there's there's a lot of research out there that'll show you. Uh, what's right what's not based on body types but prior i mean within the last even now there's trainers out there there's bro lifters out there there's meatheads out there that if you don't do it this way every time you're wrong everybody's body is different and here comes the squat police yeah wow, wow. so here's another one to think about ankle mobility Ooh, which nobody ever thinks nobody about. talks about that right so you know your ankle mobility can and will 
determine what your squat looks like. You know what I mean? Yes. Um, you also have, you know, knee valgus. You know, when people stand up, knees cave in, right? Okay, well, some people, that's just how they're going to squat, whether it's bad or not. And then you can get into a whole another conversation about that. But some people, naturally, they're just going to have a little bit of knee valgus. Yeah. It, it, it is what it is. It doesn't mean it's wrong. Yeah. Um, but so, yeah. Everybody's every, everybody's body's different. Everybody's squat's going to look different. Yeah, every and that's important to keep in mind. And, yep. and you mentioned a great point. Like it, it it goes down to let's set aside our ego. Yeah, and let's work on what we need to work on based within our body's limitations. Right. But if you go in there and then you're just trying to stack plate for plate yeah. for plate, you are going to get into the realm of the squat police and people yeah. because it comes into pride. So let's get on to our last point, which is probably the most debated. <laughs> point of all is how low should you go when it comes to squats so this is going to be as most people would say a heated debate so most people think and, and it's, it's it's two like different frames of mind and i've seen it in the crossfit community mm -hmm. where they call it for the most part to grass yeah right ATG. Earmuffs, children. <laughs> we don't cuss on this podcast. But, that's right. But, but, that, but hey, you got to say, you're, you're quoting AT, it. ATG, ATG, right? So that's right. Everybody knows what I'm talking about with that. So it, it's you're below 90 degrees, like try to get your butt, pick up a credit card off the floor if you can, right? Yeah. Like they believe that's the most perfect squat. The others would say, hey, no, it's, it's parallel. Mm -hmm. Okay. So settle this debate, Blair. What is it? It depends. Oh, it depends. I knew you were going to go there. I knew you were going to go there. All right. So, so why does it why does it depend? I mean, I, th I think it depends on what you're training for, and it depends on what your body allows. Right. Um, I mean, that's that's the biggest thing for me. Um, you know, it also it, variations of depth recruit different muscle groups. Bingo. Right. And so, you know, if Okay, how about this? If you're also doing sports-specific training, all right? So let's talk about football players. Do football players need to go ATG? Absolutely not. No. In my opinion, they don't. They Somebody don't. may argue with that. That's just my opinion. Uh, let's talk about CrossFit. CrossFit is a sport. I mean, it, it is. It's a it, There is a way of training, but it is a sport. And if you're training for that sport, that sport says, hey, you got to go ATG. Well, then, you're, then you need to train that way, yeah. right? Um, so... For gen pop, I think you, my opinion, I think variations of training both. Yep. Right. I think there's there's times to there's times to go ATG, but I would say first let's learn how to load up parallel, then we can work on adding load to ATG because we you know when you get down when you get down deep in the bottom of a squat it's a it's different it is it's very different it's so, absolutely different yeah so that's why that's why i say it all depends on what you're training for <laughs> well and getting to the mad scientist matt wheeler he he told me because i you, you just get it in your head it doesn't count if you don't go atg uh etc yep. and, and that's just more about what other people are thinking about you but where is your weakness Right. So I've done and we've been training that way. So that's just naturally how I yep. squat yep. and and I can do it controlled. But you build up that muscle recruitment where you can kind of just pop into it and pop yeah. out of it. But if you were to ask me to like squat parallel because I haven't been squatting parallel, it's hard to stop wow. at parallel. Yeah, absolutely. So that's a challenge. Yeah. So what's hard for you? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. Like what's, and in and, and football, all we did was squat parallel. And that's why I could put up big numbers. But I've never been able to put up those huge numbers being yeah. ATG. Yeah. Because, I mean, we're talking like a difference of 200 pounds. I mean, yeah. huge difference. Yeah. But now, because I've been doing that, and believe me, I can't squat that number anymore, but parallel is hard for me. Even, and, and we were talking about this, like some of the movements in, in CrossFit, like a, um, a push press or a, mm -hmm. a, a split jerk. You've got to get into a quarter squat. Like it's not really a quarter squat, but the, you're you're to get the you know, momentum and get the bar over your yeah. head. It's almost like a dip. Yeah, it's a dip. It's kind of like a little bit of a quarter squat, and you have to activate some of those muscles. Absolutely. That if you never train that that level, yeah, like you can train heavier in a quarter squat than you can in a full squat. Agreed. So you can build up those muscles at yeah. the, the top of the movement. Every part of a squat has a purpose. Yeah. And and every part of the squat is going to build and activate different muscles Correct. as you touch. So yep. it, it really just comes to your goals. So there's been um, – talk to me about this, 
Right. There's always been this myth out there that squatting ATG is bad for your knees. Okay. So this was a long time ago. So I may have to go back and do my research on this. But I read, oh man, this was, I read that that theory came out of one study from a professor of a college out Midwest. And I won't, I, I can't remember the guy's name. Um, it's been it's been a long time, but it always stuck with me that that came out of one guy saying, "Oh, if you squat below parallel, you're going to tear up your knees." One guy, yeah, one guy, and it and it, and it took off. And I, you know, I can't remember. I'll have to go back and do my research, um, or you can go do your own research on that. But here's my thing: if we weren't meant to go past parallel, look at how a toddler squats. Okay, look at kids. Yeah, when they play. Where's their butt? It's on a- their ankles. ATG. That's right. Yeah. And and they can sit there for hours. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it doesn't bother them. Yeah. So how is it that we're, you know, young bodies are able to do that? And then now as we age, it's like, oh, you don't need to do that because of knee injuries. Well, when you are, not only are you recruiting different muscle groups, but you're also training the ligaments and the joints and the things like that that are recruited once you break that parallel. Yeah, and and there's been a lot of studies in, within sports that. So I think what we're trying to get at here is you want to, if you can and you're physically able, you want to train at everything. Yes, right. Absolutely. If you're sport specific or an event specific, you want to prioritize certain things, but you want to change it, change it everything. And back in, in old school, you know, I say old school, like within the last five years, like even at the university of Alabama, like squatting just to parallel, there's a lot of knee injuries, a lot of injuries in that because they're not recruiting through a full range of motion. I think what they've since understood is that lunging like knees over the toes, Mm -hmm. um, and getting these full ranges of depth, it strengthens the limit ligaments and tendons in full range of motion. Right. So even if like your full muscle recruitment is strongest in a parallel squat, and that's where you're going to put up the numbers and you're going to put your name on the big board and say, look at me, I did it. Right. You know, right. The big three, I'm in the 1200 pound club, <laughs> 1500 pound club, right. 2000 pound, whatever you want to be great. But if that's all you ever do, and that's the only depth that you do, now you've set yourself up for high yeah. risk of injury, 100%. especially if you're an athlete. So athletes out there train in every range of motion right. possible. Doesn't have to be the same way, yeah. but strengthen those ligaments in every plane of motion and at every depth. Exactly. And I think that's truly important and, yeah. and what a lot of the kids are missing. All right, so let's wrap it up here. So should a man be able to squat 315 pounds, Blair? Do you want me to go back to my biggest answer that you love? Let's do it. It depends. <laughs> Everybody's like, ah, I tuned in for that. For that. Yeah, no. Uh, I think it's a good. I mean, I think if you're if you're an experienced lifter and you've been and you've been lifting for, you know, a, a period of time. Yeah, I mean, I think I think if if that is what you, if you if you're an experienced person that lifts weights and has trained squats, yes, I think you'd be should. If you're an average person that is hitting the gym two or three times a week and you're out there for general fitness. The benchmarks one and a half times your body weight. I agree, and and that's that is a good benchmark. Three fifteen is an arbitrary benchmark. Yeah, it's it's arbitrary. just a number. It's bro science. Yeah. And 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 if you're listening on here, be interested uh, to know. Drop it in the comments. Do you yep. think three three fifteen is big enough? What's it? Is it four oh five? Is it four ninety five? Is it bigger than that? Is it five hundred? Let's hear it. Let's see what the most you've ever squatted is. Drop it in the comments. Ooh, that's a good one. Drop it in the comments. What's the biggest squat you've ever had? Yeah, we, I we, love it. I think we're going to get some good ones, or we're going to get some tall tails. Uh, <laughs> but anyways, <laughs> hey, if there's no video, and if there's no <laughs> video, it doesn't happen. Anyways, <laughs> hey, we've appreciated it. Yeah, Thanks for absolutely. dropping by, and uh, Blair. Until next time, let's get out of here. Out.